Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners, and in this video, we'll look at how to create two variations of a sidebar and content layout with CSS Flexbox. To begin with, let's create a very simple layout with a sidebar to the left and a main content area to the right. Inside our body tags, we'll create two elements. The first is an aside with a class of sidebar. The second is a main element with a class of content. Inside both of these, we'll create a span with a class of inner text. In the first one, I'm simply going to type sidebar, and then I'll copy and paste this into the second element, and in this one, I'll type content area. These are just visual labels for when we're previewing in the browser. Next, in our CSS, we'll target the body element and give it a min height of 100 VH, or 100 viewport height units. This ensures that the body is always at least as tall as the browser window, even if it has very little content inside it. We'll also make our body element a flex container by giving it a display value of flex. Next, we'll target our element with a class of sidebar and give it a min width of 300 pixels and a background color of light gray. The min width property ensures that our sidebar never drops below 300 pixels wide. This is just an arbitrary width that I've chosen for this example, but you could use any width that you like. For our content element, so class content, we'll set its flex grow value to one. This ensures that the main content area grows to expand and fill all available space. You could achieve the same effect with a width value of 100%. Now that we have our basic structure in place, our grey sidebar here on the left and our content area on the right, let's just tidy up this text a little bit so that it looks slightly neater. If we target the inner text class and give it a font weight of 700 and a font size of 24 pixels, that looks a little bit better and next we'll centralize the text inside each of these. To do that, we need to give both the sidebar and content elements a display of flex. Next, we target the inner text element and simply set its margin to auto. This little trick will perfectly centralize your element inside of its parent element. If we reduce the width of the browser, we'll see that at the moment our layout looks fine until it gets so small that the sidebar remains at 300 pixels wide and the content area becomes way too narrow. To fix this and make our design responsive, we need to use a simple media query. I've already got the code template for the media query here in my CSS, but basically you need to include a media query that's only for screens and give it a max width of 992 pixels. Any code inside our media query will come into play when the screen width drops below 992 pixels. If we wanted to hide the sidebar completely, inside our media query, we target the sidebar class and set its display to none. Now, when the browser window is less than 992 pixels wide, our sidebar disappears. Let's delete this property and move on to another example. If we wanted to keep the sidebar, but position it at the bottom of the page when the screen becomes smaller, we'd first need to target our body element, the parent flex container, and change its flex direction to column. If we look in the browser and reduce the size, 
we can see that our sidebar is now positioned above the main content area. To switch this around and position the sidebar at the bottom, we can simply use a flex direction of column reverse. This sets the direction to column but reverses the order of the flex items. As we can see, our sidebar is now at the bottom of the page, but our layout is not quite right. Let's target the sidebar element inside our media query and give it a height of 150 pixels. As we can see in the browser, our layout is now complete. If we increase the width, we can see our original layout in the desktop view but as we decrease the width of the browser and it hits our 992 pixel threshold, the mobile version of our layout appears. Let's take our basic layout one step further and add in a full width header element that runs right across the top of the page. In our HTML above the sidebar, let's add in a header element. Inside it, we'll give it a span with a class of inner text and inside the span, we'll type header. We want to keep the exact same layout and responsive behavior for our sidebar and content area while simply adding in the header above it. To achieve this, our body element can no longer be the flex container. Instead, we need to wrap our sidebar and content area inside a new div with a class of main container. So above our sidebar, let's create a div with a class of main container. And then we'll take the sidebar and content area, cut them and paste them inside our new div. This allows our header to remain independent of the new flex container that our sidebar and content area live inside of. In our CSS, Let's remove the display flex property from our body element and instead target our main container div and give it a display of flex. Next, we'll target our header element and give it a height of 100 pixels. We'll also give it a background color of light blue and set its display to flex. This is simply so that our span will be centrally aligned inside it. Finally, we need to give our main container div a min height of calc 100vh minus 100 pixels. This sets our new flex container with the sidebar and content area inside it to the full height of the browser window minus 100 pixels, the height of our header. If we look in the browser, we can see that our new desktop layout is complete. We have our sidebar and content area, just as we had in the original example, and we now have a new header element running the full width of the page. The final step is to adjust the responsive behavior, which is not currently working correctly. Inside the media query, all we need to do is update the body selector to be our new main container class. We can now see that our updated layout is working correctly in both the desktop and mobile versions. While these two example layouts may be very simplistic, I hope it helps to demonstrate the power of CSS Flexbox when used in combination with media queries. Flexbox makes it easy to organize elements on the page, while media queries allow us to quickly update our layouts for specific screen sizes. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.